Hey. What's up, y'all? Look at that. Matchy match. Three propola hats. Well, for now, but I think I, I want to think I want to do this right here. Let's see. Wow. Wow. Hold which on, hold on, hold on. Bruce is like he's like wow, okay. which... so have a live. No, oh. we do that. How about gonna... Alabama? That's my typical hat, right? Oh jeez. Nope. Oh, man. But I think tonight we're gonna to roll with the uh oh wow Brian Lee String Team at... special. Bruce, you might say you are a man of many hats. Yes. <laughs> I'm looking at my Brian Lee hat is like eight feet right there. Yep. So, so anyway, mine's, anyway, mine's, it doesn't matter. Back here, it's it's just off to the right, just yeah. just primarily because I'm afraid. Oh, you can't see it. It's such a you nice hat. I'm so rough on stuff. It, it's it's going to get filthy, covered in it's, chicken poop and beef. Well, the first thing and, it's going to get that it's going to get the sweat mark. Yeah. You know. Right. Yeah, I'll, I'll I don't know if I wear mine. To, I don't think I'll wear mine to work in, but occasionally I'll wear it in a chat or out on the town or whatever. But yeah. yeah. Anyway, so what's up, fellas? <clears throat> Springtime. Man, you ain't kidding. Good grief. I don't want to be the first yeah. one to complain, but I'm going to be the first one to <laughs> formally uh, uh, see. There's, there's over here. There's a comment box, and I'll just write my comment, and I'll just put it in the comment box so management can. Maybe take a look at it and have a round table and powwow and see if they can do something about it. But I'm <laughs> honey I money TV. That. Great to see Pastor Propola in the house. That's hilarious. But, uh, if you, uh, I guess first things first. If you didn't know, the one and only Yappy B Man has a brand yes. new YouTube channel. Yes. Called Honey Money Honey TV. TV. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, it's yes. uh, so you know Yappy's channel for the cutouts and all the Yappyisms. Uh, but the Honey Money TV, he's taken a kind of a completely different approach with his beekeeping and how he shares that, uh, which is really cool. So make sure you like check it. out Honey Money TV. Maybe I could go there and, and make my formal uh, complaint. But this whole spring forward, fall back thing, I mean, I know we all oh, complain oh, about it. And for gosh, years, yeah. it's like, are they going to do something about it? <clears throat> like, I, I'll be the first to admit um, I'm the, the worst to actually stay up with all the politics and all the things that were supposed to get voted in and all that the bills yeah. and these things. But I thought that Ohio had its act together and it was somehow abolishing the daylight savings time or I don't know what the deal was. It, it's it, been sitting on some table for two, <laughs> almost three years. Right. It passed one of the legislative legislative bodies and is sitting on the table of the other waiting to get signed. And it's just, sitting there sitting there there's a lot more important things for our government to be doing that they're not doing at all than worrying yeah. about daylight savings times right. however i wish we could just get with the program either we do it or we don't and just get on with it yeah. i'm still trying to get my rear into gear every time we wake up you know it's it's 6 a.m we wake up and susan's up and she's getting going and i'm saying it's only five o'clock let's go back to sleep it's really only five o'clock i'm still pulling that excuse yeah. where it's anyways the bees don't care about that and holy smokes uh we've been saying it for how long guys we don't wait around for the facebook bee uh, gurus we don't wait around for all of the masters in their trade to tell us okay beekeepers now you can start beekeeping we read the trees we read the plants we read the bees and if you are in tune with that yeah. You'll know spring is way ahead, just like we've been saying it is. Holy cow, we were in some colonies today. We'll talk about that more. But are you guys? I know Bruce is already he, he's in the thick of it. But Brian, what are you seeing yeah. in the northeast of the state? You're what three hours northeast of me? Two and a half. Two, yeah, two and a half. It, it's uh, it's on. I mean, they're busy. Um, I've got my stronger colonies have a little more than four frames of brood already in them. And for March 13th, you know, and I mean, really, I checked that it's been a week ago. So first week of March to see four plus frames of brood in some colonies, it's unheard of up here. Wow. So uh, really unheard of. I mean, like yesterday I was over and just did some, some other work that we'll chat about, but like, you know, I'm looking at the the entrances, and you just see 
you know, pollen mass gets filled. I mean, the, the activity is just crazy. So for March, you know, second week of March, and I see that up here, it's just, it, it's crazy. So Bruce has already gotten the sneak peek of the season. So he's already got his beak wet. So it's not quite yeah. as exciting to him. But uh, yesterday, uh, Jake was out putting pollen patties on. Uh, and I just went out to go check just to, I just, I, could, I had to get out of here. I had to go see and smell and see what was going on. And it was unbelievable. We've got cracking the, I've got, we've, I've got so much to talk about right up front here at this chat. It's not the time or place, but holy cow, everything that we've been seeing on hive configurations over the winter time, I'm slowly starting to change my mind. I'm slowly starting to say, hey, what used to work isn't working. And I've got a an, an all-time, I think, favorite configuration that I'm going to be settling on building up towards this year. But Jake was out putting pollen patties on. I went out to take a look. We've got some colonies with five and six frames of brood. But more importantly, they look so healthy. And you know what I'm finding inside of the frames, Brian? What? Two things blowing my mind. Number one, when we were peeling off the, um, I really like a story and a half, Colin, for wintertime. When I'm peeling off that super, there's drone brood between. There's cat oh. drone brood between the boxes. Oh, wow. And then when I get into the brood chamber, nectar. Inbound, oh. like, from here to kingdom come. And I'm just thinking, oh, my gosh, awesome. I wasn't expecting that. We don't. We we have no liquid feed on. There's no liquid feed available, but there's wet nectar. They're bringing in tons and tons of pollen. The big plant right now is the maple uh, pollen that's coming in, but the uh, the dead nettle nectar that's coming in is unbelievable. So, mm. wow, what a spring! And here we are, guys. We're getting ready to all three meet up in Wisconsin for a few days and uh, and hang out there. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the bees are just going into. Okay, here's here we go. So, Bruce, what about you? What's uh? I know we've talked a little bit about the spring, and uh, you've already sprung forward. But uh, how are how are the bees looking in your neck of the woods right now? Well, they're looking really good. It uh, a couple of weeks ago, up in really actually the last couple of weeks, if not about two three weeks, there is a flower down here called the yellow jasmine flower, which you may have heard of, Greg. I don't know if you've heard of it, Brian, or not. And uh, it is actually deadly to bees. <clears throat> it's not good for the bees. And this year we've had a bumper crop of yellow jasmine. Mm. And so a um, lot of people have had some struggles. Um, the bees were really doing well. And they're still doing good, but you can just tell um, it, they just don't look as healthy. It doesn't like kill the bees, but it just it kind of slows them down like they bring in the nectar. It's one of these flowers where I, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that if they if there's something else to get, they don't mess with it. But if it's the only thing out there, they bring it in type of a thing. And so um, particularly at the Honey Hill Farm out here where I managed the colonies for for a friend of mine, um, the, I, they were looking really, really good, probably as good as they ever have just a few weeks ago. Went out there, couldn't really get good access to them a couple of weeks ago. There were plenty of bees in the colonies, but I didn't, I could, just couldn't get to them. They, he's having some stuff going on out there, and I couldn't get to them uh, good enough to get my truck back in there and really go through them. So I walked back and put some, I uh, have a lot of fun on them and stuff, but I couldn't really go through the colonies, but because they're, they're feisty and they need smoke and I didn't have the access to do that that day. So, but I went back out there last weekend and there are yellow Jasmine blooms laying on top of the colonies. He's got a, a big, I think I may be like a vine is some kind of a bush or vine, but it was up in the trees and it was just the flowers were dripping yeah. down on the colonies that were dropping down. And I started pulling those colonies apart, and they just, I mean, they're okay, but one of them was a dead out, and a couple of them just didn't look near as healthy as they did before. So a lot of people here in Alabama and in the south have been having issues with that this year. Some years, I don't know if I've ever had this or didn't recognize it before exactly like what's been going on, but as soon as that stuff stops blooming, the bees usually, I think, just turn around nicely. And, and in some of my areas, some of my bees have just, it's like it hasn't even touched them, even if it's around, but... But uh, that's the only real yard where I noticed a huge impact on it, maybe a little bit in Slocum. But overall, the bees are doing great. The, uh, the splits I made with those Hawaiian queens are, are doing well. I actually went out today after work and put one in an observation hive. I'm going to be doing a presentation at a school tomorrow morning. And so oh, nice. uh, we're going to be doing that. So I went ahead and, and got the bees wow. in there. And uh, just 
you know, just beautiful brood pattern, beautiful queen. They're doing great. And uh, we made uh, Ray Raymond uh, Nolan is on here lots of times on the, you'll see him in the comments. He came out last Friday and we broke out. We didn't break out 57 splits, but we created spots for 57 queen cells, if that makes sense. So we had a busy, busy day Friday and I dropped 57 cells from a local uh, a queen cell producer, not far from here, about an hour south of here, hour and a half south of here. So I think it's about an hour south of here. And uh, so we dropped those cells. I dropped them on Saturday. But as soon as we got done on Friday afternoon, it started dripping rain, dropping. And then we had just an absolute torrential downpour, like in the early morning hours. I mean, just a absolute gully washer type of rain. And um, fortunately, we got those splits done before that gully wash. That would have been awful trying to get all that done in the rain. But it, it this, you know, we were blessed from above, I guess, because we were able to get it done. And I Saturday dropped those cells in. So really, those hives don't need to be messed with for two to three weeks. And so this timing of this conference is perfect. And I'm going to go out tomorrow to the, the splits I made with the Hawaiian queens. And I, my plan is to go ahead and feed them and maybe add a second box on there. Let them start working up in there. And then they'll be set for a couple of weeks. And um, that's kind of where I'm at. And then first to mid, early to mid-April, we can start stacking honey supers. So we're right there at it. Wow. I'm going to see if I can pull a uh, an ace out of my sleeve because, uh, Bruce, you kind of mentioned something that uh, is, is kind of a big deal. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get him to jump on either uh, via a phone call or maybe we can give him a link and get him to jump on here. But but yellow jasmine is a very interesting conundrum uh, for a lot of beekeepers in certain parts of the country. And uh, before I say too much, I'll, I'll hold that, uh, that conversation for uh, this guest if he can um, – if you can join us, but uh, was, he, was he recently on on yeah. social media posting yep. some things? Yep. Okay, he's there. About. Okay, let me see if I can give me a second. I'm gonna see if I can patch him in here. Let's see. Bruce, where uh, do you feel like you're ahead of where you were last year? Oh well, last year. Remember, last year was awful with the. We just, I just yeah, definitely. <laughs> last year, I used almost no new foundation. You know, because I just, my bees weren't that strong. I sent them off to California. They came back weak. And the ones I had left behind didn't do very well. The splits I made, it, I had a bad acceptance rate with the cells. And we had a late cold snap. And, and this year I've already used way more foundation in hives. And they're they're building it out than I think I used all of last year. Wow. Yeah, plus, Good. I've been using a lot of uh, drawn out come out from dead outs. And so they are really... Um, it's been fun. And I've got in, in a slocum for sure. All those splits I made with Lynn on my Hives for Heroes, yeah. a Minty back about three or four weeks ago when we did the Hawaiian Queens. Um, those splits, we pulled those from. Most of them could be split again right now. They basically just filled those colonies back up. They're just strong. And we could just split them all again. I've got some boxes in slocum that are four deep. And they're just what? packed with bees. Yep. So I'm just, I don't know what to do with all these. It's like, I'm like, I don't know what to do with all these bees right now. So, so um, you're, you're probably, crazy. Like, you know, this is the first year that you haven't done pollination in about four, in about three or four years. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm loving it though, because I can be yeah. in control of the bees and they're going to be strong. Mm -hmm. And no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident barring any unforeseen circumstances. Of course, like Greg says, there are no absolutes. But I feel pretty good that we are going to have a really nice, nice year this year. Um, wow. So that's kind of what what I'm hoping to. <laughs> well, I just hope yeah. to have a good year, and I, I may just break those. You know, I could take those quadruple deeps, and I haven't been down deep in them in and in, since I made those splits about three or four weeks ago. Uh, but if they if they filled the colonies up like I think they have, I could pull two three splits out of all of them. You know, if I wanted to easily. And so, but I don't. I don't really know that. I don't. The the big issue is queens. You no know, getting queens. I can get queen cells, but when you need a queen cell, you're looking at a, it really sets the colonies back. You know, it's, it's yeah. several weeks before they build up. I mean, I want to capture this honey flow. And so that's kind of where I'm at. If I could get mated queens again, I would maybe try some more of those. But, uh -huh. but I'm probably, I probably need to just slow down with this thing because it may just be more than what I can handle if I keep splitting like crazy. You know, I've got well, enough equipment now, but if I keep splitting, I won't have enough equipment. I'll have to order. I'll have to order a pallet of deeps from Greg, and that's a lot of money right there. What I just right heard, and and it's just us here. There's, you know, only three guys here talking about bees. 
But what I just heard is Bruce's bees will be expanding and taking his numbers above 200, possibly 250. No, it won't be that much, but it's going to be back on up to 150 or so probably easily. Seeing that I'm going to be sitting in the car with both of you for a couple hours, uh, if there's any inside, like, you know, insider trading going on, mm. I'm going to let everybody know and say, who says yep. he's not expanding, but I do know that there's going to be a delivery of boxes. And why does he need this number of boxes if he's not expanding? I got a lot of rotting boxes. That's one reason. Bruce, whether you need boxes. one box, whether you need one box or one semi load, we can we can help you out there. But I'm, I'm looking forward happen. to spending uh, a road trip, uh, getting on the road with you guys. Uh, I just found out though. However, I'm lactose intolerant. Uh, so if I uh, consume any kind of dairy, you talk about watch out, roll the windows down, kind of a scenario. But you know what can really help with my uh, with my oh. gut situation probiotics and i wanted to bring somebody on here we were just talking about yellow jasmine let's see if we can go old school here uh let's see here okay so here when i'm go. bringing a couple of the strong microbials fondant with me what you're saying did you guys hear that you yeah oh there we go hey. how's it going mr john turpin how are you Doing good. How are you? John, thanks for joining us here via a uh, phone call. We were just talking. Uh, Bruce just mentioned yellow jasmine. And I and I thought, you know what? We've got a guy that's sort of an expert in uh, kind of uh, chemicals and bees and things and things like that. John, uh, for folks who don't know who John Turpin is, John is with uh, Strong Microbials, a lot of great products that focus on the bees uh, gut health and sometimes uh, helping them uh, have a little bit more uh, resistance uh, towards some of the things that they get into, helping them to process those. John, can you talk to us a little bit about yellow jasmine, uh, the dangers of yellow jasmine uh, to the bees, and, and what you've been up to recently to try to combat that? Yeah, so uh, yellow jasmine is also the state flower of South Carolina. It produces a toxin called gelsamine, which is related to strychnine. So it's a neurotoxin. It uh, you know, causes them to seize up. And so in the South, what you see uh, when it blooms is you'll see, if, if you're raising queens, it kind of looks like black queen cell virus. And a lot of people think it's black yeah. queen cell virus. And I'm pretty sure it's just the gelsamine uh, poisoning the brood. And you look in there, you see a uh, blue brood, you'll see dead bees out front. And what I, I think from, from going down there and looking around and talking to people, uh, the difference between whether or not it's going to be a killer year or not, if I guess that's what we can call it, is if the whatever conditions happened where it's the main plant blooming. I was sitting there watching it for hours in South Carolina, and it was a pretty good year in South Carolina um, in terms of uh, not affecting the bees too much. There was a lot more blooming, so it wasn't affecting them. And I, yeah, I think it's just that if maybe a type of freeze happened, Let's say in February, I killed the other plants, but Jasmine survived. Mm -hmm. Then it finished. Wow. So it's uh, so many things are weather dependent. But uh, from if I'm understanding what you're saying, yellow jasmine's a real problem if you've got uh, a late frost that kills back some of the other blooms that are out there, leaving that really the dominant bloom available for the bees. They go hit that, they bring it back, and then that can cause um, some, some issues with, with the brood itself. Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the main, I mean, because the bees, sometimes it only hits for like a week or something. Uh, so it's not a huge issue for just your regular beekeeper, but it's really the queen breeders who get hit hard because yeah. they have to graft, especially during a good jasmine bloom, they have to maybe do three times the amount to, to just keep their head above the water. Mm -hmm. Wow. Which financially could be devastating. From a... Uh from a, a, a pro or a prebiotic standpoint, uh, what are your thoughts on uh, using uh, those type of products uh, in conjunction with, uh, or then let me, let me better the, the question better, better stated or asked is, if that is the dominant source and the, and the bees are getting into it, does pro or prebiotics mm -hmm. seem to have any kind of benefit for the bees? Uh, so uh, for feedback from customers, which, 
I, you know, I'd, I'd have to have like a hundred people tell me for it to be not just happenstance. Uh, they say it does. And in, in the lab, uh, certain bacterial strains can eat the poison, metabolize it. But it, when when it comes to bees, doing it in a lab, it just doesn't mean a lot because there's right. so much, so many different things going on in the bee hive. Yeah. Uh, the we're so we're doing some research down in South Carolina. And but the the problem is I'm just a good luck charm. Uh, there I was looking at all the historical records. Jasmine bloom for the past few years. Cell take dropped down to around maybe forty percent. Right now they're at eighty four percent cell finishing rate. So how many queen cells you know, make it to the nook? So <laughs> now it's just a good luck charm. But we're gonna keep going. I took a whole bunch back, and I'm gonna extract the poison from it, and I'm gonna. I'm going to poison some bees and see what we can do to help. See, that's why we call you Mr. Wizard. Uh, John, thanks for joining <laughs> us here tonight. Uh, you're the guy to talk to when it comes to all the stuff that bees can get into uh, and uh, what uh, Strong Microbials uh, is doing to help combat that. So, John, we appreciate you. We're going to have to have you back on uh, for a full interview just to kind of get an update on all things Strong Microbials. Uh, but it's that time of year for us. Uh, you know, it's, it is a product that we have and carry in the shop and I think is a really important one. Uh, to put on early on in the year uh it, it's it's just one of those things that we've learned that when we do this uh we have a certain result and keeping these bees their gut biome as healthy as possible especially early in the year um makes a huge difference so john thanks for spending a little time here on no notice uh talking to us a little bit about uh yellow jasmine we'll have you back on a little bit later john all right sounds good greg we'll see you john thanks yeah you're going see you bye one of the coolest things about beekeeping is that, that bees are the conduit to the people. You get to meet so many great yeah. folks that you call friends that you can just call up and say, hey, what's the deal with this? What's going on? So um, yeah. John, in my opinion, he's, he's a really humble dude, uh, but he is on the leading cutting edge of so much of that research uh, on what is affecting bees and what they're trying to do about it. So it's really cool to kind of have a phone a friend, uh, John Turpin, to call with uh with those kind of things so who knew yellow jasmine who, there, there are things out there that could potentially be uh, a problem for your bees yeah I, <clears throat> like i say i don't most of my bees have plowed right through it um, i think it just they just look a little bit sick but of course i wasn't trying to raise queens i will tell you this is interesting though you talk about queens because uh like i say we dropped i dropped actually a few more than 57 cells this past weekend, but I had ordered a hundred cells for myself and some friends down here, uh, for this past weekend. And I didn't use them all, but I was going to, other guys wanted to jump on the, on the order with me. And when I, the, the, uh, lady at sleeping bear down there went ahead and made the graphs for me and uh, she's down in Chipley, Florida. And she went ahead and made, she said she made some extra graphs and everything. And when, when I texted her to make sure, uh, to confirm that we were going to get the hundred cells, she called me back. She said, look, I think it's this yellow jasmine, this jasmine that we got going on. Um, she said, because I only had 62 that 62 that took. So mm. I, I needed wow. 100 and I got 62. Uh, well, anyway, when I got there, she actually had a few extras, I guess. I don't know why she had. She had like 18 extras for some reason. Maybe I can't remember the exact reason, but I actually ended up with a little more than I wanted. I, just, I, I gave a few of those away and we got that squared away, got them in hives. I used a few of them and but she did say that she thought it was the jasmine causing that. And uh, I think it's actually, is it called, I mean, we call it yellow jasmine. It might be called, is it Carolina jasmine? It's got another name that people call it. I'm not sure, but, um, but that's what she called it. And so what, what John says makes sense. If he says it, it really affects the Queens, the queen rearing more than anything, because um, that she experienced that with trying to, uh, trying to make some queen cells for me and she that's her theory now nobody knows for sure she she's sold thousands and thousands and thousands of queen cells to um commercial beekeepers all in this area and, and commercial beekeepers hobbyists and sidelanders alike she's that's that's kind of their specialty in this area this time of year so um but anyway it could be couldn't maybe it's kind of early in the year it's a little bit iffy right now anyway but she she did produce quite a few really nice ones but didn't get the full graph that she expected wow I'll tell you what, you know what I love? I love that we're talking about uh, active beekeeping season things and not talking about winter and getting, you know, prepped for spring. It's it's yeah. here, ready or not, and it's, uh, wow, we're off to the races. So, no. Brian, what's new in your neck of the woods? 
Oh man. You know, I'm, I got some work done in the last probably, oh gosh, it's probably been within the last two weeks. Um, let me see if I can pull up a picture. I actually got some work done that I have needed to get done for a little while. I got that there, the fabric down. I got everything all cleaned up. I got the stands kind of situated. If there was any that were a little off kilter, it's a technical term there, off kilter. Mm -hmm. um, I repositioned them and now they're all sitting on the fabric that way. I had one last year actually that because of weight, it sunk down into the mud. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of, you know, it, it was just really wet and that colony, I don't know how much um, weight it had on it, but it actually sunk down. The one back leg sunk down in the ground like six inches. So now with the fabric, I got everything all mowed and got a lot of stuff cleaned up. Um, so that's set. Um, I spent yesterday, oh gosh, probably three hours cleaning frames and boxes. So if there was any like you know, comb that was built off the bottom of the frames, like, you know, that extra propolis that you'll get and all that kind of stuff. I spent hours cleaning up frames and boxes just to get stuff ready because I know the season's going to be here very, very fast. Um, so I was already going through doing an inventory. Um, you know, what do I, if I need anything, you know, cause I'm, I'm going to be, uh, down around somebody's shop here. <laughs> so, if I need anything, I figure, you know, I might as well pick it up. So, but yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's going to be this early to be working bees. I never would have thought first week of March, you know, that someone would say, hey, first week of March, you're going to be cracking boxes and moving some frames around and everything like that. And and I have, you know, I've, I've been able to get into them twice now. So um, it, it's just uh, extremely I can just just say this is odd, you know, um, Bruce, thank you much, buddy. But, you know, I do have two of my colonies are kind of smaller. Um, there's one of them that is like a classic and, and it's it's one of your daughters, um, a daughter off of one of yours. Uh, <laughs> that cluster is probably nice. that size and that's it. And a week ago when we had the snow um that was the only one that i was worried about because they were so small i thought please just get through this one day of cold and then we've got you know 60 70 degree weather here and when i was over there yesterday i went and i just i cracked the um i still have the insulated inner covers on and i cracked it and I probably couldn't have caught her on camera. It was that quick. But right when I pop the lid up, I take a look down and I see the bees and they're moving. And the queen just goes, boop, walks right across the top of the frame, boop, down the other side. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, so my smallest colony is still there. Um, I, I, you know, I, they're doing good, but it, it's going to get so busy. So, so busy. Very fast. So Fuzzy World, thank you much, buddy. I felt like they 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 got going even before uh, they just you know by the time that we started seeing the signs uh, and and watching yeah. the weather and then it still felt like okay yeah the signs are there this is what the weather is doing let's go ahead and start preparing uh, to let's think about spring coming early and we were and we were making those plans and those efforts you know but for us to already have some cap drones I mean we're I, I'm I'm in a position where and. It, two and a half weeks, two weeks from right now, we're going to be grafting. I mean, I just, you know, I already had my, so, my grafting schedule lined out for the rest of the year. Uh, and I just, it kind of threw me for a loop because now I've had, I've had to bump everything two weeks early. Yeah. Now, so this one here, you're going to be like, wow, my strongest colony that I have it probably had close to five frames brewed in it. It, it was very large. Mm -hmm. When I was just going through and I was shifting from the double deep down to the single deep, and then with the medium on top of it, and I'm shifting that configuration around, I saw a handful of 
drones walking around on a frame. Wow. And this was last week. So they would have been laid up in February. So to have drone brood in February. There's so many things that we... I there the bees don't kick all the drones out all winter long. I know everyone talks about that, and we do see the bees dragging drones out of the front porch. Yeah, but if you are like us and you are getting in your colonies even throughout the winter time, you look, you will find an occasional drone. Like they they don't dismiss every single drone, but what I'm seeing is just the, the, the amount of they've, they've really started to turn, you know, if one of the things that we, we, I, we, I constantly am fielding questions on is folks will hear us talk about what we're doing, what Bruce is doing, what Brian's doing. And they'll want to replicate that wherever they're at in the country. They saw, you know, Bruce got going, you know, four weeks ago, you know, uh, yeah. Greg and, and, and Brian are getting ready to, to kind of jump. They hear all the things that we're doing and they try to emulate that. And we've, we've done our best to try to talk to why it is that we're doing those things more so than the how and the when. And once you understand the why, the how and the when's no big deal. But one of the things that we are constantly talking with folks about is when to put pollen patties on. And I, we, we still get it. We will probably get the, this, the, the pushback forever. But there's always somebody somewhere that says, How dare you? How dare you put pollen patties on so early in the year? Because you're going to cause your bees to go into brood overload, and then they're not going to be able to keep them warm, and they're going to spend all the effort and wasted energy dragging all that brood out. Yes, that can possibly happen, but that also happens has to happen, in my opinion. What I've seen here with at least our line of bees is you've got to have real protein coming in. You've got to have real carbohydrates coming in, and you have to have real sunlight days coming in when those three things align when those three things align then the bees move forward however there are certain races and this is my opinion like italians anything that's more of a straight lined italian they seemed that to lead need less of those <laughs> cues to start moving forward but we've worked hard to not this not to necessarily weed the italian out but to minimize that impact where we want a little bit more of a frugal nature where yes, they're building up, but what I'm doing while we are feeding pollen patties and we have been feeding pollen patties is we want these bees. It's like their engine is warmed up. They're idled and they're at that tree. They're at that light ready for it to hit green. And then they mash the pedal and then they go and it's full speed ahead. That's what we're trying to do with pollen patties rather than having the bees be, you know, the, the, the tree turns green, they're starting their engine, they're warming it up, and then they're going to let go. No, because that's going to cost us maybe two weeks, three weeks. We want them to be warmed up, idled, ready to mash when it turns green. And by feeding pollen patties or even a little bit of liquid feed, heavy syrup, for us this time of year, that's exactly what that does. Because we're in the worst, one of the worst possible areas in the country to raise bees, it feels like. It's our window is so short, so we have to find ways to really get the bees going uh, and take advantage of the of their instinct to jump. Greg, what I just heard you say now, Bruce earlier said uh, in not so many words, yes, everybody, I'm breaking 200 colonies this year. What I just heard you say is you are part of a contrary farmstead. If it's not bees, it's every other thing we've done in our life. We just are looking to to nature. We trust that God has a plan for us and we move forward. And and that is uh, contrary to mainstream America. That's just the way it is, it seems. Yeah. Man, ain't that the truth? Oh, yeah. But that's that's beekeeping. That's homesteading. That's farming. You've got to be in tune with all those things. Know what your purpose is. Know why you're doing those things. That's what matters more so than than doing everything that everybody else does and and taking the path of least resistance. I feel like a lot of our life uh, raising seven kids on a farm uh, is literally like the salmon swimming upstream. A lot of times it is a grind. It's, It's rough. It's hard, but it feels like it's the right thing to do. That's what we should be doing with our life. And it's no questions asked. Just dig in, do the work. 
Yeah, yeah. Bruce, we have a guest. All right, Greg, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Let's bring her on, man. Oh, boy. Should I click it? Yeah, let's click it. It's gonna be. Should we tease it? Should we should we tease the guest first? Like who who is the mystery guest? Maybe they can leave in the comments below. We should, let, let's leave some hints. Let's Here, watch see. this. Watch this. Can someone? I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you a hint. She li deliver our she. guest to us. Way to go, I Bruce. Come on. This guest lives within forty miles of me. That's one. Bruce, thing. can you deliver mm -hmm. her to us? Did you see there? See. Can I deliver? Can she be delivered to us? This one, that went right over Bruce's head. Wow. Me too. Wow. Me, me too, Brad. But see, I, I, you know, Cayman makes fun of me. You know, Cayman, you got to be careful with jokes with Cayman because sometimes they go right over his head. And he says, Greg, mm. you know, the problem with you and you tall guys is you just grow right through your hair. And so sometimes jokes, mm. I just don't get them. They just, psh. so I, 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 didn't get, I didn't get that one either. Isn't one of the, the duties of, a mid yes, her Don't last liver midwife. Deliver. I see what you did, All Brian. Right, you are well, everybody's it looks like everybody's had some really good guesses on here, so let's bring her on, Brian. I wanted to share an experience my we had mouse. last week, it's a pretty cool experience. Looking for my mouse cursor. <laughs> well, if it's if it ain't old Lisa, hey, Lisa, killing me. <laughs> That, would, that literally, I thought that was a good, like, I can't alignment. believe I didn't get and they're it. Like, they're like, they're looking at me like, what are you talking about? Uh, that was a good one. That was really good. Now I really feel like I've made it the big time. I'm on the stream team. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome, Lisa. It's good to have you on here. <laughs> it's good to see you guys. Well, I put, a, I put a message in the private chat a few minutes ago, and I asked Brian if, or, you know, you guys, if you thought we could bring Lisa. Lisa and I had a really kind of a, it was a, interesting experience but a really fun experience and just a really neat experience last week and uh greg you were involved a little bit um in this experience actually believe it or not so uh anyway <laughs> lisa um we got down lisa why don't you tell them what we were doing what the plan was you don't want me well, to go into the sordid details do you <laughs> no no don't go into the sordid details well it's kind of what was the basic i'll let you kind of tell the stories oh, from what the basic great theme time. was we had a great time. I met Bruce in um, Slocum at one of his yards down there, and um, we were able to transfer some of the bees over that um, I think he and Lynn had split a couple of weeks before into a um, pro. Uh, it was an Endura hive, and um, presented to Lynn, and uh, that was just such a nice experience. So uh, tell tell everyone how you know Lynn. Uh, what kind of what the whole story is behind that so i well i got into the um house for heroes national beekeeping chat one night and um i noticed she was on there i'd never met lynn as a matter of fact the other night was the first night i'd met her face to face but um it was kind of odd because she was looking for a mentor and she said that she was in northwest florida so i asked her if um if I said, well, how, how close, or I didn't want to ask her exactly where she was. You know, you just don't want to reveal those things online. And she said that she was close to the Alabama state line. And I said, well, I know someone in Dothan um, that is a mentor for House for Heroes. And would you, you know, would you want me to help connect you? So I got up with Bruce, I think first and, um, got back with Lynn and then I think I sent, I don't remember if I sent an email to Charlie McMaster. Well, I'm not sure. Yeah. I don't remember exactly how it came about, but I let met Lynn on that chat and um, kind of got her and Bruce connected a little bit so they could start talking. Well, one reason I wanted to bring Lisa on is because she really facilitated this uh, mentorship. <laughs> I, I, signed up for hives for heroes lat not this this year but last year at, at the con I came in this conference and then um didn't have a mentee hadn't heard from anybody I, there was one person they tried to match me with and that didn't work out so just, so um yeah you know i so, love you um, and so um <laughs> basically lisa's like well i've got someone you know not far from here that and so it Lisa kind of greased the skids, made it happen, but the experience was really fun. We met down there and there's a video. I'm working on the video. 
just to let you know, for anyone who ends up watching it, and we've got it's just the four of us on here, right? So, a little secret. <laughs> I I got you know my plan was to show up at the B yard, to have Lynn uh, Lisa there for Lynn to show up at a certain time. I thought we'd have time before dark to like go through some of those splits that she had helped me make, and then we would pick a hive out. I mainly just wanted to show up and show her how the hives were doing. And I wasn't even going to tell her initially that she had this this hive we're going to put the bees in for her to take home. However, it did not go like that at all. So first of all, Lisa and I got there about 5, 15, 5, 30, and it was already getting kind of dark. It was the, it was before the time change. And uh, Lynn was running a little bit behind. She got there um, in the area. By the time she got to town, I think it basically was dark. So after a while, you know, we just we had opened up the box and we're like, we got to put these bees in this box. And so we put the bees in the box. And uh, yeah. so when you watch the video, I, it, it is just a very disjointed video, but it is, it is, it's kind of a fun video. So Lisa's out there. I left her with my phone because my thoughts were <laughs> when I went to get Lynn, who was about five, I thought was about five minutes away. Um, I could just bring her back up into the B yard and Lisa would be standing there videoing this. So I left my phone with Lisa. Well, while I was gone trying to find Lynn, Lynn tried to call my phone. And Lisa, I don't know if she couldn't unlock it or what, but she didn't answer it. So Lynn left. She didn't know what was going on because I didn't answer. And I was driving around looking for her. Anyway, it's quite the story. Finally, I came I came rolling back up in there. I'm driving all around looking for her. Came rolling back up in the B yard. I said, did Lynn try to call? And she said, yes. And so I called Lynn and she came back. We met and we were able to deliver her. Like one of Greg's beautiful uh, Endura Hive, eight frame Endura Hives for her to take home. And Lynn is super, extremely grateful and excited about it. She is an American hero. And uh, I'm going to tell you this, and I, I cut a lot of this out because there's some dead time, but the the funniest part of the video is when Lisa is at the bee yard for about 12 minutes <laughs> on her own in the oh, dark in my bee yard. So that's going to be on there. Some of that's going to be on there. So it's almost like it's almost like the Blair Witch Project out there. It was dark Blair and Witch. creepy. And it was pretty funny. Oh, my gosh. Put that on the so, members only. Put that, put that to the members no, only. No. Anyway, it, it's I cut a lot of it out, a lot of the dead time, but Lisa's definitely going to be a star during the middle part of that video. So I just want to bring Lisa on and and uh, share a couple minutes, a couple of experiences. But really, once again, mm -hmm. Greg, you mentioned the bees of the conduit to the people. And my goodness, I mean, none of us would have known each other. We wouldn't have known yeah. Lisa. Lisa, I, it's just the whole thing is just a, there is something behind this. It's a, it's a greater power than what we what we have created. So. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I appreciate you meeting me out there, Lisa, and that it was really a great thing you did My by pleasure. kind of getting that getting that uh, mentorship kind of pushed through per se. Is Lynn is a little bit different because she has had bees before. She's not a brand new beekeeper that's never had them. She has a little bit of equipment. She's actually had already gotten a hive or two. Uh, but part of my my understanding and part of what I wanted to do was, you know, I think is go ahead and help her out with the colony. And I felt like what cool, more cool way to do it than to those splits her and her husband came out and helped me do a couple of weeks before, you know, those strong splits in the weird, nasty weather they helped me do um, and to let her come back and actually present one of those colonies to her. And what better hive to put it in than an Endura hive. That's awesome. From Greg Burns at Nature's Image Farm. And, and Greg, I, you know, I did purchase the colonies from Greg, but it, it was worth it to me. It was a, it's just, it was Lisa described the the feeling that Lynn had when the shock. I'm like when she kind of figured out what was going on. Explain kind of how she how she reacted. It was just one of those awesome moments. She was just totally floored. She said, "Oh my gosh!" She says, "Oh, oh really? These are mine." She says, "Oh, thank you, wow. thank you." It was just. It was. I mean, it's just. It's very. I'm gonna get in my emotions here. It, it was very surreal, very yeah, surreal. Was really cool. She was, she was very thankful. Um, and you know, when, when you meet someone that has spent, I think she spent like 28 years or something in the military. I mean, that's, awesome. that was a big part of her life. And it's just amazing to see, see people, you know, we appreciate them. Yeah, and that's right. and that's just what we want to show them that we appreciate them. Yeah, and absolutely. she was just she was in awe, absolute awe. Yeah, and I, just to let you know too, something else that happened. I I had my DJ mics on, and Lisa had one on. I had one on. We were kind of walking through what we we're going to do, and of course, mine somehow got turned off. So. <laughs> 
<laughs> so as I'm editing this thing, I'm trying to figure out now how to get my volume. You can hear me, but just I'm kind of, it's, you know, I'm kind of a stickler. I'm not quite as intense about it as Greg is, but I'm pretty intense about my audio on my videos. I want people to hear it. So if you watch the video and you think, my gosh, this guy has no idea what he's doing with his audio, just understand I know that and I realize that, but I couldn't leave those parts out. And I've actually, I'm going to put some uh, subtitles down there to kind of be able to see, hear it better. But just if you watch the video, just understand you need to watch the whole thing because if you just watch the first 30 seconds, you're not going to get any clue of this. Got some, it's got some <laughs> disjointed but very cool stuff in the video. I think you'll enjoy it. But Lisa, I wanted to invite you on and uh, we appreciate you coming on tonight and sharing a few minutes with us about well, your thank experience. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been Bruce, my pleasure. Do you, do you, do you have, have any? Do you have an unedited, and I hate to interrupt, but I just want to check and see. Do you have the unedited 12-minute segment? <laughs> well, I do. <laughs> because, I mean, we're going to be in the car Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll have to listen and, to it. I mean, we could funny. just watch it and watch it. I mean, yeah. why not? We could, we could turn it in black and white. It was kind of black and white anyway because it's dark. Yeah, because so it was dark. Do you guys, what's the, uh, I'm so bad. There, there used to be a... Uh, when I was a kid, I remember uh, when you were flipping through the channels, there was there was some kind of show where it was like, uh, how do you explain this? You, it was like watching the silhouette of like a robot and a guy oh, and something yeah. else watching a movie. Oh, oh, um, I know what you're talking about. It was that robot, and it was oh, like the, you know, mystery science something, theater, mystery science, yeah. or something or something. We yeah. should do that. It'd be stream team silhouette watching this video and all the commentary and the knuckleheaded freaking frat that goes back and forth. Wouldn't that be fun? Brian yeah, we could, could we do could that. We could have a lot of fun with it. We could have a lot of fun with it. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you guys had a lot we, of fun. Uh, yeah. Lynn, you know, special shout out to Lynn. We want to thank you uh, for your service. For us, it's an honor to be able to be a, play a small That's part it. in that. Mystery science. Mystery Science Theater. Okay, yeah, cool. Lynn, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah Brian's yeah. vod. Okay, everybody knows. Okay, cool. And it's Lynn, for us. Know, it's it's uh it's special to to have a, just a small part in that with the Endura Hive Wax Dip line of equipment. You know, it's when you give somebody that you're giving somebody literally a lifetime box. It's not going to need painted. It's going to last forever. So that's a special thing that you guys have done for Lynn and say, hey, here's some equipment. You don't have to worry about no paint, no rot, no hassle. Put it out there. Enjoy your bees. Uh, enjoy the beauty of the box. So I, I appreciate you guys including us in that storyline and doing something special. Bruce, I'm going to send you a couple uh, uh, freebies as a way to say thanks to Lynn for her service. I'll send those to you. You can get them to Lynn, but uh, we'll get something else shipped out for us to say thanks. Okay, thank you. And uh, Lisa, uh, since you're on here, if you could talk just a minute about, and I know Brian, I kind of co-opted your stream tonight, but take just a couple minutes and talk <laughs> about maybe for those who are in the who are in the comments who may not know what Hive for Heroes is, kind of what it is. I we actually did a live stream a few months back. Um, and uh, we actually had Steve uh, Jimenez on, who was the founder of Hives for Heroes. And that's kind of where I got super fired up about it. And I was already excited about it, but uh, we had him on. And if you, if you get a chance to scroll back through the live videos on my channel, we happened to do it on my channel that night, the stream team. It was just a great video. And Steve talked about, you know, what it's really all about. Um, also, is it Ken Lebowitz over in Andalusia? Yes. Lisa Ken, Ken is the Alabama mm -hmm. rep, and he is just a great guy. Yes. And uh, just honestly, you know, it's about saving lives, literally saving lives, because um, there's something about these bugs in a box that has an effect on people. And, uh, you know, I think that Ken and Steve and, and all of us who are a part of this, just it's it's a really super important thing to do. And, you uh, there have, I'm sure, I'm certain there have been lives saved because of the honeybee and because of Hives for Heroes. So, Lisa, take just a minute if you could, and maybe from your sure. perspective, explain what Hives for Heroes is and, <laughs> and any final thoughts that you might have. Well, I have to say, uh, the, the first time um, I met Steve at uh, the Alabama Beekeeping Conference, Fall Conference, a few years back, and just talking to him. I immediately fell in love with Hives for Heroes. Um, it was something I knew that I wanted to do. It's, it's listening to his story is extremely eye-opening. And the main reason that I wanted to get into it is because I have a son-in-law who is um, an Iraqi war veteran and he suffers from PTSD and he wanted to get into beekeeping, which is the main reason I'm here. But um, Highs for Heroes uh, reaches out to people who are 
not only former military or veterans or even active military, but also first responders, um, firemen, paramedics, police officers, nurses, um, healthcare workers in general. And they offer a program setting up a mentor, an experienced beekeeper with two plus years experience or more with a mentee. And the mentee is usually that person who has applied online at hivesforheroes.com. Uh, you can apply for mentorship and menteeship on that website. And Charlie McMaster, and I believe his name is Troy, um, they are two of the key people also in the organization. Charlie works really hard at matching mentors up with mentees. Um, he likes for them to be within a 30 mile radius, but sometimes it's not completely possible. We do need more mentors. Um, Alabama, in our area, we are really low on mentors. So uh, Ken has been, Ken Leibowitz, who is our state director, has been very active at trying to recruit mentors for the program. But it's, a, it's an awesome program. They give scholarships out for um, beekeeping classes. Um, they just do all kinds of great stuff. And it, I think it's something that has really grown to um, much with much more velocity than what Steve even ever imagined. So it's really amazing to sit down and talk with Steve and also to Ken and, and to see where this is going. It's also starting to branch out into other countries now. Who, I think you're muted, Bruce. Who's going to tell Bruce he's muted? I'm muted. I'm muted. I looked up there. I saw the little red thing. Okay. <laughs> Well, I probably can't say that again as good as I was saying it then, but I'll try. We appreciate you coming on tonight, Lisa, and sharing those thoughts with us. And and I, I one reason I wanted to have you on, and and the thought came to mind was, hey, we need more mentors. So, lots of folks in this comment section right here, if if you can can carve out a little bit of time, or or just look in your heart, if if it's something you would like to do, help a veteran out. There, I think are way more uh, mentees that are looking for mentors than the other way around. Isn't that correct? And so we yes. need we need some more mentors out there yeah. and. And they just are doing a phenomenal thing. But thanks for joining us, Lisa. Thanks for coming hey, on tonight. We thank appreciate you for it. having it was an me. Awesome experience, and, and be looking for it. the be looking for the uh, video coming out in the next couple oh, of days. Lord. Featuring, I just can't wait. <laughs> featuring Lisa and Lynn, and uh, it was it was fun. And the twelve minute time, uncut <laughs> super <laughs> secret. Unedited If you guys haven't monologue. already, <laughs> make sure you guys go over and subscribe to the Grammys Beekeeping and Homesteading youtube channel she's way better to look at than we are she's funnier <laughs> and she's probably doing a better job keeping her bees so if you want to learn some things go over check out her, her youtube channel subscribe oh. grammys beekeeping and homesteading thanks for joining us tonight thank lisa thank you thank you everybody y'all have a good night i'll stay see in the you. chat see you later all right bye-bye <laughs> she's so she's so awesome she's so yeah. cool you guys just totally missed what i was saying Oh, I got it. After, I had it about now. about the time you finally told us, right before then, I like clicked. Yeah. I'm like, Dog, midwife, God. deliver. <laughs> Brian, I just I've I've got a I've got a question. <laughs> What's that? Does it hurt? What? Being so just being so witty and funny, does it hurt? I mean, that um, was that was so good. That was like eight levels above me and Bruce. Good. I mean, that was like, man. I was surprised that neither one of the two of you got that. I'm like. Grammy midwife, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, can one of you deliver her? D d you know, I'm like we've had babies at home. Well, I mean, I have nothing. I didn't have much to do with that. But Susie is home birth. We know all about. I, I should have yeah. got that. You know, we're that's been anyways. Um, it's that time of yeah. year, and if uh, it's just what complete brain fry o overload yeah. with uh, all the things here. So Brian, that was Brian. I'm gonna have to keep yeah. Bruce. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on Brian on this uh, this trip. Um, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, we're I'm looking forward to seeing everybody at the uh, yeah. Beak Meet 2024 in Wausau, Wisconsin. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of fun. A lot of great speakers. We're absolutely uh, honored and humbled to uh, to be presenting and speaking. There, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about uh, homestead beekeeping. Uh, a lot, what a lot of folks don't know about our story is we were like any other beekeeper. It was something that we incorporated into our homestead, and it was the thing that stuck. It was the one thing that kept growing, kept having opportunities, 
And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew into we started having enough bees to raise uh, nukes and so to raise queens. And there was a, a demand for uh, local quality equipment. And one thing led out and just one thing after the other. So I'm looking forward to sharing uh, this Saturday at the Beak Meet in Wausau, Wisconsin, uh, just a little bit about homestead beekeeping. There's a lot that goes into homestead beekeeping that has been a huge part of us getting from where we were to where we are. But a lot of that is up here. A lot of it is the systems thinking. You know, when we're talking about all the things that we can incorporate our bees into, uh, food forestry, grazing, you name it. There are so many beautiful things that there's just interlace on the homestead. We are function stacking all these different components on a homestead. And when you start to learn and think of things in a system, you're starting to close loops of waste. You're reducing the entropy. And I, li I love that because as you grow your beekeeping operation, you're always thinking about, okay, how can I fold this component or this into another? Where are the overlaps? Where are the leverage points? Uh, and has really helped us to grow uh, our supply shop and also our beekeeping. So I'm looking forward to speaking about that. It's going to be a lot of fun because Brian's going to meet us here. Uh, we're going to, me, Susie, and Brian drive all the way up uh, to Madison, Wisconsin from Ohio, pick Bruce up from the airport, and then make the two-hour trek up uh, to where the conference will be held. And the stream team will be there live and in person uh, at the conference. And it's going to be a lot of fun. I think we're, we're, all, we're going to try to go live at different parts of the day you might see it on a little bit on Bruce's channel. You might see some on Brian's channel. You might see it on the Nature's Image channel. Uh, but we're going there to just kind of interact, uh, shake hands, be just be there and be present. Uh, we're, we hope to take a little bit of content that we can share later. Uh, but how fun is that going to be where it's, you know, a, the stream team uh, is traveling all the way to Wisconsin to go meet, uh, to be with folks. If you're listening to the stream uh, tonight, uh, leave in the comments. You can leave them now, but especially leave them in the comments once this publishes to YouTube. Let us know if you're going to be there. It'd be awesome to get everybody in one spot and kind of get a photo stream team and all the folks uh, who listen to the chats. Uh, that'd be really cool. Bruce, what do you what do you think about traveling all the way to Wisconsin uh, to make an appearance uh, as the stream team? Well. It'll be the first time I've done something like that. Besides, of course, the you know it came as conference, the B Expo this past year and the couple for previous couple of years. But I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I don't I don't know that I've ever been to Wisconsin. I've been a lot of places, probably a vast majority of the states, but I don't think I've ever been to Wisconsin. So, you know, I, I there's no way I can even attempt to say it like they say it up there. So I won't. But <laughs> anyway, I look forward to, to rubbing shoulders with some people and, and maybe some names I've seen in the comments, some people I've communicated with and, and uh, some people I may, I may have even met at, at the at the B Expo. But just getting up there in that part of the country and just seeing what it's like up there. And, and uh, it, you know, it's always a tremendous – it's always a lot of fun just to meet folks and, and see – put names and faces. Now, lots of times I forget, you know, your name when I see you again, but I'll recognize your face. But it's just so cool just to, just to see people and – and uh and talk to folks and and uh just kind of just continue to uh, reinforce and and see what an incredible community this is we got to get uh bruce on some squeaky cheese curds while he's up there what do you think brian oh do they even have cheese curds in alabama and if they do are they squeaky they probably do, but when we're in Utah, there's a big dairy up in Logan, Utah, oh, and, yeah. and my wife, she always that's one of the places she likes to go if we if we get a chance up there to Logan, Utah, and get and she always gets the cheese curds and she loves them. I'm not, I mean, I like them okay, but but I don't crave them or anything like that. But yeah, they're they're, they're pretty good. I I like them okay. I love those things, man. Brian, are you excited to uh, get into a vehicle and travel ten and a half hours each way with your Lactose intolerant friend, Greg. Well, what I heard, what was it, two weeks ago, the last time we were on, what I heard uh, come out of your wife's mouth was, can the two of you both um, do nothing but snack on burritos? Bean burritos. So I... Um, yeah, I heard that. So I'm planning on tomorrow, you know, I need to go and just pick up some some road snacks. So 
No, it's, 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 I, I'm really looking forward to it. I mean, I, I told a couple people, you know, um, and a couple, you know, a couple of my coworkers and that they just laugh. They're like, you're doing what? I said, I'm going to Wisconsin to a, a beekeepers conference. And they were like, they have those on I'm like, purpose. What? Yeah. But you know, and then like my one other buddy, um, I was, I was texting yesterday and he was like, he said, for you to have a hobby that you're that involved with and that you go to like other States, he was like, I, I only dream of having a hobby that like I'm that invested in, you know, but no, it's just, it's going to be awesome. I mean, to be able to just go and hang out. I mean, the three of us hanging out, that's, you know, I mean, that's worth its weight in gold. I just, I, I enjoy the time when the three of us can, you know, spend any, any amount of time together. But uh, meeting those in here too, I saw a couple people say that they're going to be there. So it'll be nice to shake hands with some folks. And, you know, I know Matt, um, you know, Homestead Engraving, Matt and Sarah is going to be there. I actually called him yesterday and his wife is actually going to be there as well. So oh, both wow. Matt and Sarah are going to make the drive over. It's, it's, I think it's just a little over like two hours. So um, they were looking at like their schedule and things like that. And, uh, you know, figured, yeah, they, they need a day off. So they're going to, they're going to make the trip over. So that's going to be really cool. I mean, just to, to be able to, you know, shake hands with, with people that, I mean, I, I think I've been talking to Matt. Oh my gosh. It's probably been four or five years on here. So crazy, you know, but yeah, it's, 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 I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, I've been, I've been sitting here thinking also, like, do I bring my GoPro and all that, you know, um, and do like I did with, uh, you know, the conference in January and I probably will. I'm, I just, the more and more I think about it, it's like, you know, I should, you know, so just because, you know, I know that this is, they're, they're kind of getting, getting things kickstarted. So I want to put forth as much effort as what I possibly can just to get the word out there, you know, for the beak me. So, but it's, it's just, it's going to be loads of fun and us, getting able to hang out and go around and live stream and that it's just, yeah, that's awesome. So it's a lot, it's going to be fun to share that because they're doing such a cool thing. You know, yeah. they're when, when folks see a need and they dig in and they just say, okay, Hey, how can we figure this out? Let's, let's yeah. work together. Let's figure this thing. Let's dig in. And what you find is there are a lot of folks who want to support those uh, type of movements. Uh, Michael Yankee, his wife, and then the entire crew there, uh, in Wisconsin, they just they've done so much great work in getting this thing started. Um, and as you can imagine, when when you put yourself out there and you start doing those kind of things, you know, there are challenges that you are going to have. And um, they just keep digging in, working through. And it's going to be awesome because there is going to be so many great speakers there. Uh, David Peck will be there speaking. Cayman Reynolds, of course, will be there speaking. Uh, Ian Stepler and Randy Oliver will be there. They're going to zoom in. Uh, there's a lot more great um, uh, folks speaking there. It's a big deal because I think what a lot, a lot of state conferences and state associations are finally starting to get with it, uh, and they're shaking off the old rusty, dusty approach, and they're starting to realize that if we want people to show up and actually be here and support these conferences uh, and these meetings, then we need to understand what it is that they're consuming. Where are they going to learn? You know, it, it's important for us to have all levels of research and all level, all different types of, of, of uh, mediums to share this experience and share this information. But what they're finding is that a lot of folks are more interested in watching the practical everyday beekeeper and how they're going through making decisions, what they're doing and, and why they're basing those decisions on than to just absolutely then to only learn from um, a research or a doctorate uh, in a certain part. Or a certain field of beekeeping, that's an important thing to consider. YouTube has 100% changed the face of education, of conferences, yeah. of expos, because if you want people to be there, you've got to understand who your target audience is. And when the target audience is, is absorbing more YouTube videos than books and everything else, you have to know that. You have to understand that. 
and the states and the associations that are bringing in those type of speakers, bringing in vendors that people actually want to buy things from, those are the ones that are making real and lasting change in this industry because now we can work together, we can collaborate, we can get this information out there in such a powerful and impactful way that hasn't been done in the rusty, dusty ways of old. It's exciting when states like Wisconsin is stepping up, uh, West Virginia is stepping up. You there are so many states popping up, taking that approach, and they're exploding with growth. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to be there speaking. I mean, and even more excited that the stream team is going to be there, meeting yeah. with folks, talking with folks, hearing about their beekeeping. We hope to be able to go live a few times, get folks uh, into the conversation. I'm pumped up, as you can tell. I'm really excited about yeah. it. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. We saw, we saw firsthand in the state of Ohio last year as far as conferences. You know, the state mm -hmm. conference that they were going to hold, they end up canceling it because they couldn't get enough people signed up that were going to attend the conference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so you have the old mindset as far as how to um, put on one of these conferences. And it's like, well, that's... That's not what people want, you know, and the conferences like was down in West Virginia, this one here. I mean, they're going about it in the right way, the way that people want. And, you know, it shows. I mean, they boom. I mean, their first year doing it. And uh, I mean, they I, I think what they had to close off ticket sales, I think they, they're pretty close They're You know, it, it's it's just it's going to be a packed out place. So it, it's nice. It's it's nice seeing that. So. That's where um, yeah. it's at. That yeah. is where it's at. And the more folks get with that, uh, Missouri is another great uh, example. Uh, yeah. Tom and his wife, yeah, uh, the Stosmans, yeah. all the folks there uh, in Missouri, same thing. They're bringing in uh, the beekeepers and the education and those experiences mm -hmm. that people are actually absorbing, consuming, and using as solid points of reference with their beekeeping. That's mm -hmm. a big deal. I'm, I'm, don't get me started. It's, it's, we're an hour and 10 minutes. We can't be on long tonight. Um, but you just guys, yeah. it just got me fired up. I'm going to, I'm going to step off the pulpit. Pastor Propola is going to step back off that just a little bit there. Pastor Propola. I like that. That's, I, I I've got us about, let's all join in giving Steve and Jane, uh, a big, uh, congratulations. They were, they kicked off the beekeeping supply season here at the shop by getting married right here at Nature's Image Farm awesome. in, the, in the shop. What an honor it was uh, to join those two rascals. But uh, how cool is that? Uh, beekeepers are just some of those most specialist folks uh, that I ever did meet, so. Hey guys, can you hear me? Yeah, Hello. loud and clear. All right, you want a little uh, preview of the video? Oh my gosh, oh. let's see it. Can you see Come on, it? put them on the big screen, Brian. How'd you do yeah, that? Hang on, yeah. Uh, hopefully you can hear it. I'm gonna try this. Okay. Turn turn it it's the whole width of the. Turn your phone well, like this, and it should adjust. There it goes. All right. Yeah. I'm gonna try to see if I can get this. That is like Blair Witch. I'm telling you, man. Here we go. If you can hear it, I hope you can hear it. Oh no, that's not it. I hear it. Uh, for real, for real, this is getting creepy. <laughs> Y'all hear that? Hey, hold on. <laughs> Hold on. We got another section right here. Here we go. Here. Listen. Here we go. Oh, did I miss it? Hold on. Oh, did I miss it? I missed it. Hold on. I think I might have missed it. <laughs> well, I missed this one. Anyway, she says, I've got a hive and a smoker. Or I've got a, yeah, something like that. A hive tool and a smoker, she says. But this, I don't know. This could be a great one. video. This, this really, we could really turn this into something. You should have that in your intro. Just start it out, and you, all you hear is, I've got a hive tool and a smoker. Here she is right here. All right, she is so funny, y'all. You can hear the crickets and everything though, right? The frogs? The peepers. Yeah. Oh, I missed it. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty wild. 
She went on for like 12 minutes. I'm still in a smoker and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> oh, classic awesome. video intro. Oh, my. Suspenseful anyway, music, awesome. flickering lights, sound effects in the background. Anyway, she's so she's so cool. That was fun. That's awesome. That was just like two of the little things she said. She's like out in the woods for like 12 minutes by herself like that, just trying to – she kept my phone running the whole time, so she's walking around. It's pretty cool. Probably now I cut out. I cut out. I cut out. Know. I cut out most of the dead space, so it's not 12 minutes of, but I, you know, it's probably two or three minutes of her just saying stuff like that. It's pretty funny. Oh anyway, that's it'll funny. be fun. Yeah, that's good. Well, well, guys, uh, what do you say we start to wrap this up? Uh, yeah. We've got a lot of packing and prepping and everything else to do to uh, uh, this to sort of get ready. So, uh, Bruce, I'd ask you what's in the near future for you, but I sort of know, but, uh, moving past that, what's, uh, what's in the near future for you, Bruce? Well, it's just mostly, uh, something I can't, I can't hear very good. It's what? There we go. Okay. <laughs> uh, mostly it's just going to this conference and then just kind of just trying to hang on for the ride. I think I'm going to have to start about the first of April. I think just trying to stack some honey boxes on and see if we can collect a little bit of honey this year. And, I'm trying to time my splits. You know, I've, I've tried to time them kind of early so that I can, you know, they can build up and I can get honey even off of some of the new splits. Hopefully that'll work out well. And I've got to figure out how to decrease the size on some of these monsters that have just filled those triple and quadruple deeps right up again. So I've got to figure out what to do with them. Um, I just really wish I had some more mated queens to put in there so I could, you know, because when you, like we said earlier in the chat, when you put cells in there, yeah, they'll, they'll do okay, assuming they get accepted, but it's just it really sets them back. I mean, you're looking at basically a month before you before they're really starting to build up again, if not a little bit longer. And so it's kind of, you know, if you're trying to capture, if you're trying to peak at honey flow season, it's kind of hard to do that. But, you know, we'll figure it out. Um, I'm way ahead of where I usually am because I usually have bees sitting in California. So, you know, I'm able to get in them sooner than they normally get back. And, and um Normally, it'd be two or three weeks away from getting them back. And last year, it was even later than that when we got them back. And so, yeah. able to go ahead and get in them and watch them and manage them. And, and it's been really busy, but it's been extremely fun. It's been so much fun to be able to actually have my bees here, to be messing with them and to, and to get that done. So, mm -hmm. um, but I look forward, really look forward to this conference and then coming back and just, you know, checking the new splits with sales that I did for a queen acceptance and then, uh, stacking these i'm actually going to stack these hawaiian queens up i think tomorrow before we leave feed them one more time like i said earlier and just seeing what we end up with it's just a it's just been a lot of fun so you know what can i say we're we are definitely so far it's shaping up to be a, a pretty good year down here assuming we don't have any crazy weather event whether it be cold or nothing but rain for two weeks assuming we don't have that we should be in pretty good shape this year awesome what about you brian well, I think in the next week, um, it just all depends on weather. Um, I probably am going to prep the rest of my equipment. That way, everything is ready. Um, I, I want to have everything sitting so that when I do my splits, literally, I've got the bottom board and the deep, you know, and then the outer literally just stacked. So when I'm making them, I just got to go in and pick up. So I want to get literally everything set. Um, Cause when, you know, when things really start moving, um, I don't want to have to sit and spend, you know, two, three, four hours cleaning boxes. You know, I'm not going to have the time for it. So I figure I might as well do it now. And, and I mean, there are some days where it's going to be rainy so I can go sit inside and do that kind of work, you know? Um, but you know, if, if we get another decent day, um, I probably am just going to keep an eye on the colonies just to make sure that the switch that I did, um, that they're all, everything is sitting good. Um, it, it's going to be exciting this year to see how things work out. Um, you know, I, I had my, in my last video, in fact, I had so many questions in that, that people asking about the single brood, um, this is my first year doing it so you know we'll see what happens but i've got a plan i had a number of people also and i appreciate everybody's feedback and comments 
Um, but I had a number of people saying, you know, maybe give this a shot or try this. This year, I'm not like steering off of my course. I need to stick to the plan that I have. And I see Jason saying their closet sideliner. That's funny. Um, but, you know, I just I have that plan set and I want to stay on that course just to make sure that everything is set. So but it's, it's going to be fun. I mean, I just I want to see them hopefully here within the next week or two um, working that medium that I put on. That way, when our initial flow starts, that I can, you know, switch things over, put the excluders on and just kind of move more into that single brood chamber. So um, it's going to be fun, though. You know, I, I think I'm going to enjoy it versus, you know, double deeps. I, I, I do. True, truly, I just I think that I'm going to enjoy this style uh, a lot more. So going to be fun, though. Look forward to following you along and seeing uh, what your uh, what your take and what your experience is yeah. uh, with that. There was a yeah. uh, one question I wanted to, wanted to take care of before we uh, we close her out. Uh, for, let's see, from uh, David's yeah. Bee Farm, uh, how many bees go with a queen on a mating flight other than drones, or do they not? Guys, have you ever seen queens take off out of boxes for a mating flight? Never. Or come home? No. Bruce? No? Uh, not that I know of, no. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see how it happens. I'm sure you have, though, Greg, since you're a queen, ra queen raising guru. Well, I wouldn't say guru, but I'd, we've ra we've been enough, or haven't had, we've had a, enough boxes of bees here that when we're looking and you see kind of an abnormally amount, an, an ab abnormal amount of bees leave a box. Like, you know, not a swarm, but what I can say is I, I have personally, I have never seen an individual queen leave the box. When I have seen a queen leave a box, it's usually in a small handful cluster, maybe three to 15 bees leave a colony. And when I look, I'll see and I'll look out and I'll see, oh, my gosh, that's a queen because you you can't you can't miss her her her. What, what, what am I trying to say? Her uh, her silhouette when it, especially in the, on a sunny day when it flies up it's like a little cloud dark cloud and you get used to just seeing okay that that was probably a queen because just how how big I have seen queens leave but it, it seemed like there was a small entourage now what I've seen even more of is when the queens come home from a mating flight having more of an entourage and the reason I say that is when you make a lot of splits uh, or you have a lot of mating nukes you are typically uh, for the most part, you have a fairly good understanding of how many bees are in that box to take care of the queen cell, keep the keep things kind of moving forward. Uh, yeah, and actually, Grammy's a great. That's a great point. It's a uh, we caught one. If you go back to her channel. We caught a uh, on a swarm that we were working on. We we had a virgin had just came home through that and landed there, and then there was a whole gob of bees with her. Uh, but um, I got sidetracked. I have no idea what I was saying. Oh, about the sizes. You kind of get to know roughly how many bees are in each box because you're like, okay, that's a little lean. That's probably not going to cut it. I can't tell you how many of the the uh, little splits or little mating newt colonies that were kind of on the lean side, knowing I was going to have queens leave within one to three days, and you come back a week later, and there's twice the amount of bees in there. Where, where does that, where do they come from? Where, how did they get there? You know, I, I have seen queens come home and land on the front of a box and there'll just be one after all, all these bees just right there with her. Boom, 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 boom. And when they go inside the colony, she heads in and then they're they're greeted by everybody else coming in. There's a little exchange and then boom, it's just rapid fire. They do come in. So I don't have any scientific slow-mo Fred Dunn quality videos of how many bees and who they are and what their genetic makeup is on who was coming, who was going. But I can say that I have seen uh, small uh, clusters of bees take off with queens. And I've also seen uh, fairly significant amounts of bees come home with her. And the, the last thing I'll say on that is I almost believe that there is sometimes an entourage uh, that does fly with the queen that may possibly know where the DCAs are. 
and they may possibly escort her to those areas. How else does this, does this queen know specifically or exactly where to go find the fellas? I'm sure we could have somebody on, you know, you could talk about that Humberto or David Burns or somebody who maybe has some kind of a scientific answer. But when you think about it, how does a queen who's never been out of the box know where to go to get mated rather than just going on a loop-de-loop -loop and, a, and a roundabout and flying? And I, I, I have seen them leave and come back in such a short window. It was so intentional. They knew where they were going. How do they know that? I don't know, but I tend to believe that maybe they're possibly escorted to the overall area by bees from their own colony. Uh, and then when they leave and they have the mating sign and they've got all the fellas chasing um, little mama, I think that they're all trying to still do that as they come home. And I think that whether it's a, a pheromone, whatever is going on, it's a lure and it's attractive yeah. and bees are following that and coming home. So I do think that that happens. That's Anyways. interesting. I never thought about that, but yeah, that is interesting. Huh. That was supposed to have been the short answer. Yeah. Good stuff. But, but anyways, well, uh, here at Nature's Image Farm, uh, it's uh, it's such a fun uh, time of year. What we're busy doing here is uh, I'm, we're thankful that we've got the, the labor now to take care of the shop while we're gone, take care of the bees. Jake's been out uh, putting Hive Alive pollen patties on everybody. Uh, the fondant's completely off. No more fondant for the rest of the year. Nothing but Hive Alive pollen patties for probably another three weeks, maybe four weeks. Um, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. Jake's been out there uh, really getting everybody cleaned up with the salic acid. Um, I should probably take a video because I put him on the spot and kind of asked him, Jake, what do you prefer, the Instant Vap original or the new Instant Vap compact? And boy, does he have a favorite. Uh, and uh, I've also asked Jake as he's going through the yards to kind of give me an idea, Jake, on what you think the overall most uniform and solid configuration is of boxes that overwintered. How many boxes was that? And what are you seeing with the colony? Uh, I'm going to tease next week's talk. I've, I've, I'm, I'm rapidly, I'm learning to not ever get, not to rest on my laurels and never get comfortable uh, or complacent because what we have done in last year or the year before or five years or 10 years You've got to be able to look at the situation, adapt, improvise, and change when you actually see that information on the ground. I'm seeing things that's really changing my mind about what our wintering strategy is, what size colony is that those look like, and that can greatly impact what we can or can't get away with late in the year. So uh, stay tuned next Wednesday. I think are we on the are we on our channel next next uh, or the Nature's Image channel next week, guys? Bruce's ours, yeah. It's Bruce's. You can you can definitely talk about it on yours. That's fine. But I think cool. we also need an independent video, Greg, professional professional grade like you do. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Thanks for rubbing that. Teasing, teasing with you, man. I'm gonna start calling Bruce rocks, rock salt, and nails. That's that's what you're hitting me with there. <laughs> but uh, but anyways, uh, well, hey, we appreciate you guys. Uh, I want to thank everyone for all your Endura Hive waxed it box orders. We've we've been enjoying getting those packed up, getting those uh, shipped out. We've got a couple package routes still available if you're looking for package bees, uh, nukes, queens, or supplies. We'd love to earn your business. Uh, visit us at naturesimagefarm.com. You can see the brand new Endura Hive line of products there. We're so proud to be collaborating with Premier Bee Products to do all the custom dipping for Premier Bee. All the propola boxes, the pure boxes, a lot of fun stuff happening right now. We'll talk a lot more about that uh, this coming season. Until then, we want to thank you for spending time with us tonight. Looking forward to seeing everybody in Wasaw, Wisconsin at the Beak Meet 2024. If you're going to be there, make sure you stop by, say hey. Uh, we're looking forward to seeing you guys there. And until next time, we want to remind you to be the lighthouse and be the change you want to see in this world. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.